BTFU. Uh, we've got the great Cliffy Lyons on the potty. Cliffy, how are you? Uh, very good, big Les. Gavin, how hello. Are how are you, my friend? Good, thanks. Good man. Thanks for being with us. No, it's great to be here. It's a nice spot. Yeah. Yeah, very nice spot. The Mossman Rowers with the 165 inch R here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at um, some of these stats for Cliffy Lions. Played 309 NRL games between 1986 and 1999. What I actually want to talk about is 53 games for Leeds Rhinos. What was it like playing in England um, in the Super League? Uh, it's pretty good. It's actually before the Super League. So I actually went and played with Leeds before I played with Manly. So went from North to Leeds at a season over there and then came back to Manly. So it was, it mm. was pretty special. And I, I went back there, there again in 1989 too as well. Yeah. So we did back-to-back seasons because they play in the winter then, but they, they play at the same time as NRL now, so you can't do it. Yeah, geez, they'd be yeah, cold playing in the winter over there. Always cold. It's, oh, it's uh, interesting, Big Les. Mm. I got an email through LinkedIn the other day, mm. um, a mad supporter from the Rhinos, yeah. was trying to reach out to Cliff yeah. on LinkedIn yeah, right. and um, wanted to get the crew together. Did you Actually, hear about that? I did. I did, I, I did email him back. He just He's doing a book. He's putting a book together ah, about right, um, yeah. players yeah. that played for Leeds. So obviously my name was mentioned there and he wanted to get my views on it. So it was good. Fantastic. Yeah, very, very nice. Yeah. We also had some beautiful premierships in 1987 and 1996. Walk us through those. That must have been an awesome experience. Yeah, the, the, it's pretty special. Obviously, playing at Manly was a very iconic for me. It was a, a great move, um, I thought. So, obviously, um, uh, we went there in 80, 1986 and uh, had a, a reasonable year. And obviously, we made the semis that year and didn't go any further after that. But um, obviously, 87 was a different year and being at the club for another year was uh, was awesome. Obviously, you know, guys like Paul Vorton, you know, Noel Cleal, uh, Chris Close, uh, Michael O'Connor, uh, Dale Shearer, the bug on the wing there, but these guys just you know we just wow. formed into a, a special crew and it was just it was awesome through that yeah. eighty-seven year. Cliffy, tell me about one I think hero that day. Or I think outside yourself because you got man the match that day. Kevin Ward, big pommy, hundred and I don't know ten kilo, <laughs> just come from minus five and you played in one of the hottest grand finals of all time, didn't it, you? It was pretty hot. It was about 32 degrees. So and he had a bo- oh, blinder, I, didn't he? He had a, he had a blinder, mate. So he was the other guy that I would have picked to give the medal to. You know, obviously Kevin played with us throughout the season. Then he had to go home for three three or four weeks to play his competition. Yeah. And to come back to the heat like that and perform the way he did was just yeah, it was special. Yeah. And probably one other thing I wanted to raise too, Big Les, was um, the influence of Bob Fulton. Um, as your coach, what what was just so special about him to probably any other coach you've had? Um, well, Bob had his way, so he's, he was obviously very motivated in video technology and watching mm. videos, watching the game uh, the week before the the team that we're playing playing against. Yep, and he'd go through uh, plays and that, uh, looking at their weak points. Uh, this is where you go here or you, you go there and bring it back here and stuff like that. And it sort of, it, it, it worked for us and it was pretty special and we just, we picked the, picked the teeth out of them, I suppose. <laughs> did, he, did he have any, um, I guess, did he have any uh, plan for you though? I mean, you, you <laughs> played pretty much off the cuff, didn't you? Oh, well, I, I, I play what's in front of me. So obviously if there's something on and I see something else and, you know, you just got to go with the flow, I suppose. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I, I was... No, glad to have that rain and, and, and change the way we played or you know, at that instant anyway, yeah. I suppose. But yeah, absolutely. You know, it was there and most of the times I wouldn't call it if I knew or wouldn't be a 99% chance of scoring. Yeah, you know, you know? yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, one question from me that's not on the rap sheet, um, but if there's one player from today's game that you wish you could have played with um, in your younger days, who do you reckon that would be and why? Oh, probably the Fox, I'd say. Bit of speed mm. there, just uh, you know, giving the ball. Mm. There's, there's certain types of players that um, you need to give the ball too early, and the Fox will be one of those players. Now, there's certain type of players like Daryl Williams, you give him the ball late and he'll hit the line hard, yeah, and then he'll bust through, yeah. You know, like Michael O'Connor, you give the, Michael O'Connor the ball early, footstep, check, check, mm. step around so he can go. So, you know, the Fox would be probably mm. the guy I'd be looking for. 
Yeah, yeah it's an interesting it. choice. Um, the Fox as well, and yeah, a lot of speed to burn out there on the wing. You've got a hell of a rap sheet, mate. Um, <laughs> inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2018. Talk to us about that. That's got to be a special honour. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. All, you know, rugby league is, is a special game, and I don't play to get these achievements. I just I play because I love the game, and and you know, when someone bestows bestows this on you, it's it's an honour to be there and be recognised, and I just uh, part and parcel, especially up there with Arthur Beats and our coach or that team too. So it was you know, it's pretty special. Yeah, very very good. Um, so yeah, Dalian Player of the Year as well in 1990 and 1994. Dalian 5-8 of the year in 1990 and 1994. Rugby League Week Player of the Year in 1994. Clive Churchill Medal in 1987. Indigenous Team of the Century in 2008. That's uh, a heck of a team as well. Um, you've got some <laughs> awesome players there. Scored 336 points for Manly. 80 tries, 5 goals and 6 field goals. Um, now, what, what stood out to me when I was you know, going through some of your stats and doing some of the research was... Continued playing in a local competition until his mid forties. Now my dad's in his mid forties, and I tell you what, he cannot move um, like some of the younger blokes can. So I couldn't bloody move. It's, it's probably more like late late forties. Mm. So I played yeah. my last A grade game when I was forty eight, mm. and that's when they caught me. So I thought it was time to give up. <laughs> mate, mate, you had a game three months ago. Three months ago. Yeah, four months ago. I was that was with the Legends of the League. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty special. Is yeah. that it? it wasn't. It was on the weekend, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There you go. How, how was that? How'd you it was go? good. We, well, we go out to the country areas, and this one was in Queensland, Cherbourg. Mm. So we went up there for the weekend and you know, just to help the community out and make sure that – because they've got, they got a bit of a oh, – I can't, can't think of what the word is, but mm. they're health-wise. So we went up there to just to try just and – Just mental health. Mental yeah. health and just fix them up and have a good weekend with all the locals and that. And we had a game uh, – it was the Australian All Stars against the Sherberg All Stars? So oh, it was fantastic! It was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mate, I, I want to talk a little bit more. Obviously, it's um, our uh, obviously state of origin uh, coming up on Wednesday night. I wanted to talk a little bit about you and just uh, your uh, memories. Uh, I, I think the there's not too many memories of '87 uh, when you went to LA. Um, tell me about that because. <laughs> Watching it on TV, the first thing I know is Peter Sterling couldn't get through the uh, the banner. Um, it was a good banner. The, the old cockroach running I was actually, around. I was actually behind him and <laughs> I'm going, what's going on there, Pete? I had to give, give him a bit of a push to get through it to break through. So. Yeah, and what about the – I don't I don't care about the game because the game was a dead rubber. But what about the uh, – Not to the us after, it was. Not the to after us it party. <laughs> it was too all that year. <laughs> what, what about the they? after party? Tell after me about party. the after party. No, it was pretty – it was a uh, – well, it's different to being in Australia, so it was just yeah. it was different. All, all you know, even going outside, looking around, and especially down there, where is it? Uh, around California, California, LA. That, yeah, LA. Yeah. It was just it was unreal. And we actually went and visited the Disneyland. Yeah, right. They took us to Disneyland. Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I've never been there is before, that, mate. Is that Disneyland at the bar, or is no, that no, no, Disneyland? No. The rural Disneyland. The rural Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. I can imagine some of the the, the, the scallywags, though, some of the players you played with in that that uh, eighty seven team. Yeah, all there. I think Phil Daly was there. I think Crusher was there. Um, yeah. Michael O'Connor. I don't, I'm not sure if Snoz was there. Yeah, Pete but, Sterling, uh, Brett Kenny. Did he did he tour, or was it you that played the five eight position? No, I played. Yeah, he did yeah. the tour. Yeah, right. So. Um, I guess the the one that really stands out for me is ninety one. Um, Mark Guy, MG versus Wally Lewis. I firstly want to, I want to, I want to sort of break that down. Um, there was a number of punch ups prior to that. Steve Waters, yep. Benny Elias getting stuck yep. into each other. Yep. Um, and then it erupted. Where were you on the field? Were you on the sideline? <laughs> I think, I, I, think I just chaos. went over and sat in on the sideline when it started. <laughs> It was MG and uh, the King started and was just like head to head and nose to nose and yeah. Then, Did you hear the discussions? Was it heated? Uh, I was too. Uh, I it looked heated because I wasn't near him. Yeah. Because we were doing other stuff with other blacks, the other Queenslanders. Yeah, a few other <laughs> little punch ups. Yeah, yeah, just little yeah. niggles around the back. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, the next day seeing those two in the in the paper head to head. Yeah. And with MG like towering down over the King and. Yeah. Like who, who, would win, who would win that fight? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Eh? Yeah. I don't know. So tell me about Wally Lewis 
playing against Wally Lewis, obviously the king of, of uh, Queensland. Yep. To you, was that daunting getting that opportunity to play against him or was it a real challenge? Oh, it's definitely a challenge. Yeah. Obviously, him being the king, he was, you know, he knew when to come into play and when to stay out of it. And obviously, his, his technique was uh, A1. So, you know, he chose the right time to, to get the ball and obviously the blokes outside and knew where to run. So it was yeah. Yeah, it was pretty special watching him play. So Yeah, yeah. You know. And what and was he was he intimidating on the field? Uh I, I sort of worried about my own game. I didn't listen to other other people talking to you. Yeah. I was just listening to our guys and you don't worry about the other what the other team talk about and or what if they're yelling at you just you just ignore them. So that's all I did. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well um Talking, talking state of origin. What was that experience like? Uh, like walking out there, you know, in the Blues jumper. Yeah, it was. Games? Oh, just playing at Lang Park. That was my first introduction mm. to the game. Was they had uh, one game all, and they brought me in for the third game at Lang Park. So it was just uh, walking out onto that oval. You can just feel the tenseness of it. You had to get a knife to cut through so I can get out there. But it was, yeah. it was that uh, chilling and vibrating. It was just unreal. It was just. And the game was just that fast. Mm. It just it was totally just 100 mile an hour till the end. Unfortunately, we we lost 10-8, I think that, that day. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, another one for me, Big Les, is obviously. But it's still um, too all though. Too all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you like to think Queensland will say it the same, won't they? They'd, they'd probably say they won the freaking thing. Yeah, they'll. Yeah, yeah they, exactly. They won't, they won't say it's too. Yeah, 100%. Right. <laughs> Mate, for me, um, obviously the pinnacle and um, probably. One of your proudest moments was playing in that second test um, over at, um, uh, I think it was Old Trafford, correct? Yep, correct. And probably the greatest try of all time. We've watched it, you and I, a couple of a times. Few times. A few <laughs> times. Um, <laughs> your your recollection recollection of that try, but that special moment running out onto Old Trafford. Yeah, it was very, yeah, very special. Um, obviously, um, just to make in the kangaroo too was pretty special alone. So, you know, I was, ch- I was thrilled about that. And obviously, you go on the tour and you, the, the kangaroos play on the weekend and uh, the mugs play on the Wednesdays. <laughs> that was that was us. So yeah, thank so God we've only got five hundred viewers, Lee. <laughs> uh, no, it was pretty special just to be in the squad and yeah. be a part of that. And but obviously, we didn't like it losing the. The first test, and you know, for my benefit, um, they 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 don't tell you that you're in the team. They just put you all in the hall, and then uh, the manager reads out the team, and they get the number six, and there's Cliff Lyons, and I'm just and they're going, mm, what do I do now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, as soon as we, we all get up and shook hands and went out to my room and done a couple of backflips off my off my bed and <laughs> yeah. yelled out and then rung home and told them the good news and that and yeah, it was yeah. pretty awesome. And I think the my special. Um, part of that is you ended up winning the series. We did, yeah. yeah. Well, we didn't want to be the first ones to lose the Ashes, so yeah. we were under the pump, I'll tell you. And it was, a, I, I guess it was a master straight from Bob, though, some of his changes, and probably some, some people at the time, you know, your journalists and whatever, would probably think, geez, this is a big change, a big call uh, to bring yourself in and, and a few others, but it seemed to just work, didn't it? Clicked. it did, yeah, it clicked in. Obviously, um, the scores in that game sort of seesawed, so mm. it was pretty... Anybody, I think it was just anybody's game. I yeah. think that uh, you know, our dominance in it probably paid at the end. Yeah. So. yeah. Tell me one more thing. Um, playing with Ricky Stewart, um, I, I, I sort of see him as one of the best halfbacks I've seen in the game. I thought he revolutionised uh, the game. Andrew Johns obviously was a great player, but Ricky Stewart, what was it like playing next to him? No, it was pretty good because we, we both like sort of, we had our sides. Left to yeah. right, doesn't matter. But it, if he wanted to change, and I wouldn't even worry about it, I'd just switch back to the other side. Yep. And his long balls, you can't get anybody better than the long balls that he can throw you. Mm. 30, 40 up metres, he can hit you on the chest anywhere and just his skill about organising his forwards. And Understanding that just, the, 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 the game. Yep. Yeah. It was just unreal. It was, just, yeah, it was good to be a part of it. And, yeah. And, and then watch, watch him play. It's actually, I'll tell you a story about um, Ricky Stewart. Was, yep. he, he played rugby for Manly. Right. When I was playing um, wow. at um, Manly in 85, 86. Yeah. And in the off-season, I was driving from Sydney to Gundagai, so I got family down there. So 
we pulled over about halfway there at Goulburn somewhere, mm. and Ricky Stewart was in the in the garage there as well. We, <laughs> we ran into each other, and he was on his way to talk to Canberra about pl- about playing with Canberra. Wow! Then wow. on the way down back back then, so yeah. Did was, you ring Bob? We were all good mates. We were all good mates then anyway. So yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, okay, so you were good mates then. Yeah, because he played rugby. Mainly, so we went yeah, and right. Them. Yeah, so you went, yeah, went and watched each other. Yeah. I mean, he's got to be one of the the great, I think, great um, players that have played both mm. codes, uh, yep. rugby and yep. rugby league. Oh, for sure. Um, for me, I guess Indigenous players. Um, you're a proud Indigenous man. Yep. Um, you have an Indigenous company as well that yep. you've had now for seven seven years, which is going uh, fairly well, I hear. Um, um, great guns. Yeah, security and uh, electrical business, which yep. is great. Um, but tell me about the Indigenous um, space and, and, and some of those great players that you really, um, you know, look up to, but not only look up, but look up to you, but you, you respect these days. Um, well, you look, well, I look back at Arthur Beach and um, mm. him number one, I suppose, uh, leading the charge back in that day and it was probably a lot harder then for him than it is well, it is for us now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. The, obviously with, with the Indigenous Know, culture being learned around the world in Australia, and everybody's buying in on it and, and learning you know, what, what Australian culture is about. I suppose the yeah. indigenous engagement with the you know, yeah we were here first. I suppose yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? But yeah. you know, it's, everyone's got to buy into it, and there's lots of uh, lot you know, like like I mentioned the Fox before, and you know players like that. Uh, Gi, you know, yeah. players like that. Steve ran off, you know this. Oh, they went all right. Yeah, they're not bad, they're not bad. <laughs> but they're all Queenslanders now. Yeah. Oh, bloody good. Jonathan Thurston. I mean, we can <laughs> keep you, going, can we? We can, can't we? Can. we? Yeah. But I tell you, there was one player that I, as a you know young bloke, used to watch, and I just he just for me, well, stood out for many ways. His he, speed, his his prowess, his power. Larry Corrua. I mean, was he would was he one of the the pioneers as a as, as an Aboriginal man and and a, and a great player for Balmain? Mm. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I, I yeah. just for, for me that that was special watching him play and score those tries down the wing, yeah, left wing. Another another fast winger like the Fox. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like to get these blokes up and have a race. Well, I can, not you. It's hard. No, not me. <laughs> Fair no. I'll, I'll, pass, I'll pass when the ball goes. <laughs> they run. I pass. <laughs> You got to uh, find the you got to find the fast ones. Yeah, absolutely. Well, mate, you've had an absolutely outstanding career, and it's been an awesome pleasure going through it. Thank you, Cliffy, for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk about your career and it's great get to your be thoughts boys. on the orange. Hey, it's been brilliant. Thanks, Cliffy. Really mm. appreciate it, mate. Go to btfu.com.au to access all the podcasts coming out each week, or go to the YouTube BTFU, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, oh, oh.